Hello, my good friends. Derek Deschamps here for Internetworking Influencers, your source for free Cisco certification training for network engineers. Welcome to day one of our free CCNA 100 105 IC and D1 training course. The Internetworking Influencers CCNA 100 105 IC and D1 training course is comprised of 13 videos each focusing directly on a set of specific items on Cisco's official exam topic list. As a reminder, today's video has a set of free practice questions that are available on our website at internetworkinginfluencers.com that will help you brush up on the topics you learned today. The questions are a true representation of the types of questions you'll face on the actual exam, so be sure to check those out once we're done. All right, so let's get to it. So as I mentioned earlier, each video in this course focuses directly on a set of specific items on Cisco's official exam topic list. This video is the exception to that rule. Today we are going to introduce you to the Cisco iOS command line to ensure you know your way around a Cisco device before proceeding with the rest of the course. Even though this material doesn't correspond directly to Cisco's official exam topic list, it is tested on the exam. If you'd like to have a look at Cisco's official exam topic list, I've included a link to it in the show notes. A console port is used to connect to a Cisco device that has not yet been configured, or is otherwise inaccessible. A console port can be RJ45 or USB. To connect to an RJ45 console port, a rollover cable is used. To connect to a USB console port, a standard USB cable is used. Once the physical connection between your PC and the Cisco device is in place, a terminal emulator program, such as PuTTY or Secure CRT, is used with the following settings. Bits per second should be set to 9600. Data bits set to 8. Parity set to none. Stop bits set to 1. And flow control set to none. Once you've put those in correctly, hit enter. And you should see a command prompt similar to the following. The first portion is the host name of the device and the greater than symbol signifies that we are in user exec mode. User exec mode is the first level of access and is very limited in its functionality. In this mode, you can enter commands to connect to remote devices, temporarily change the terminal settings, perform some very basic testing, as well as view the system information. In practice, I very rarely use this mode, because it's so limited. To gain access to the full set of commands on the device, we want to enter Privileged Exec Mode, or what is often referred to as Enable Mode in the field. To enter Privileged Exec Mode, we type Enable at the command prompt. We will then be prompted for the Enable password. After entering the password, you will notice the command prompt changes to a hash symbol. This signifies we are now in privileged exec mode. As I mentioned, we now have access to the full set of commands, which will allow us to view the configuration of the device. So let's do that. Now there are two different configurations we can view. The startup configuration is the configuration that is saved in the NVRAM and is the configuration that the device will load when it reboots. The running configuration is the configuration that is currently being used by the device and that is not necessarily saved yet to the startup configuration. So if we make a change on the device, it will immediately take effect and will immediately be reflected in the running configuration. It will not, however, be saved to the startup configuration until we issue the command write memory, or WRMEM for short. 
So just on a side note, you will notice that I said you can just type wrmem instead of write memory. One of the nice things about the Cisco IOS command line interface is you don't have to type the full command. You just have to type enough of the command that the device can distinguish which command you are referring to. You can also begin typing the commands and hit tab to have the device complete the command for you. So in this case, wrmem could not correspond to any other command besides write memory. So that's all we need to type. And if we type out wr and then hit tab, it will autocomplete the word write. And if we type out mem and hit tab, it will autocomplete memory. All right, so back to startup and running configurations. To view the running configuration, we would type show running config, or show run for short. To view the startup configuration, we would type show startup config, or show start for short. Since the running configuration is the configuration that is currently active on the device, let's look at that. Okay, so here is all the default configuration of the device. In this case, a router. We can see its interfaces are configured with just the default configuration. If we wanted to alter this configuration, we need to move to the next mode, called Global Configuration Mode. In order to get to Global Configuration Mode, we have to already be in Privileged Exec Mode, which we can see we are, because of the hash symbol on the command prompt. Now to enter Global Configuration Mode, we type Configure Terminal, or Config T for short. You will notice that the command prompt has changed, showing config in parentheses. This shows us that we have now successfully entered global configuration mode. So from this mode, we can make changes that will apply to the system as a whole. Like if we wanted to change the host name of the router to border-router-1, we could do that here by typing hostname space border dash router dash one and hitting enter. If we need to make changes to a specific interface, we will need to go into interface configuration mode. To do this, we type interface and then the interface name, ethernet space zero slash zero and hit enter. You can see the command prompt has now changed to config-if in parentheses, which means we are now in interface configuration mode. So let's give our interface an IP address by entering IP space address space 192.168.1.1 followed by the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0, and hitting enter. Now to exit out of interface configuration mode, we type exit. You can see that took us back to global configuration mode. Now if we type exit again, we are back to privileged exec mode. Let's see how our changes have taken effect. If we now enter the command show running config and scroll down to interface Ethernet 0 slash 0, you will see the IP address we just configured has taken effect. However, if we enter show startup config, and scroll down to interface Ethernet 0 slash 0, our changes have not yet been saved to the startup configuration, meaning they will be lost if the device reboots. To save our changes, we type write memory. 
Now if we issue show startup config, you can see that our changes have now been saved. So one last iOS mode that you should be familiar with for the exam is called ROM monitor mode, commonly referred to as ROM mon mode. If your device is booting and it cannot find the proper system image to load, it will enter ROM monitor mode. You can also access this mode by pressing Control C while the device is booting. From this mode, you can choose to boot the device or run diagnostic tests on the device. From experience, you usually enter this mode when you've misconfigured the device's boot parameters, and you end up in raw monitor mode, where you can fix the problem. The command prompt in this mode will change to either just a greater than symbol, or raw mon followed by a number such as raw mon one greater than symbol. So to recap, the startup configuration is the saved configuration which is stored in the NVRAM. The startup configuration is loaded when the device is powered on or rebooted. The startup configuration can be viewed by typing show startup config from privileged exec mode. The running configuration is the active configuration loaded in the system's working memory, or RAM. The running configuration can be viewed by typing show running config from privileged exec mode. The running configuration is saved to the NVRAM by typing copy running config startup config or write memory from privileged exec mode. User exec mode is the first level of access. User exec mode provides access to a very limited command set. The command prompt for user exec mode is the host name of the device followed by the greater than symbol. Privileged exec mode is accessed by typing enable and entering the password when prompted. Privileged exec mode provides access to the full set of exec commands. The command prompt for privileged exec mode is the host name of the device followed by the hash symbol. Global configuration mode can be accessed by typing configure terminal from privileged exec mode. Global configuration mode is used to configure features that affect the entire system. The command prompt for global configuration mode is the host name of the device followed by config in parentheses, followed by the hash symbol. Interface configuration mode can be accessed by typing interface, followed by the type of interface, followed by the interface number from global configuration mode. Interface configuration mode is used to configure features that affect a specific interface. The command prompt for interface configuration mode is the host name of the device followed by config-if in parentheses followed by the hash symbol. Raw monitor mode is accessed when the device fails to load an iOS image or by hitting Control c during boot. RAW monitor mode can be used to boot the device or run diagnostics. The command prompt for RAW monitor mode is just the greater than symbol or RAW mon followed by a number followed by the greater than symbol. And that brings us to the end of day one of Internetworking Influencers CCNA 100-105 ICND1 training course. Don't forget to complete the free practice questions for today's material, which can be found on our website at internetworkinginfluencers.com. The free questions will help highlight the key points that Cisco will expect you to know for the exam. 
Also, if you enjoy our free training and would like to show your support, please check out our Patreon page. We offer numerous perks to our supporters, ranging from additional practice questions and detailed study notes for each video, to direct access to our instructors, to answer any questions you might have. I'll be back next time for Day 2, where I'll cover the OSI and TCP IP models, as well as TCP and UDP protocols. I'm Derek Deschamps for Internet Networking Influencers. Thanks for watching.